Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to be replacing the fuse block in the SR240Z with a PMU16 from ECU Master. It's been a long time that I've been thinking about buying a power management unit to try in one of my cars. Now, in this case, the PMU16 from ECU Master is very clearly described just by its name. PMU stands for Power Management Unit. 16 means it has 16 circuits to work with. The way the unit works is it can use a single source of power coming in from the battery to distribute to those 16 circuits how you choose to configure it. Now you'll have some high amp and some low amp outputs, but other than that, you can computer control what the outputs are allowed to do, how often they're allowed to be triggered, when they're triggered, or how often they're allowed to fault. So in the case of a radiator fan, I can control when that radiator fan comes on, I can control when it overloads the circuit, and when I decide to reset that. Instead of having a fuse simply blow because demand exceeded the 25 amps or whatever of the fuse that was put into the block, if this overloads, I can program it to tell it to let it cool down and try again in 30 seconds. I can also tell it to engage an alternate fan. In the same case, I can look at the fuel pressure and decide when to engage a secondary fuel pump, even if I don't have an engine control unit monitoring the engine's vitals. This gives you a lot of power and flexibility in configuration with it. This particular unit also has data logging capabilities as well as accelerometers and things like that to allow you to program rules around things like if I experience a car crash and I'm laying upside down, please turn off the fuel pumps so I don't explode. Those are nice little features to have. Now this one in particular, I'm really curious to try because I know they also have another version that uses auto support connectors. And if I can figure out how to budget for it, I'd really like to buy that one to replace the wiring in the Mustang if this one seems to work out pretty good. Now, the other thing I'm really curious to see is if I can fit this where the original fuse block was in the 240Z because that would be really nice, both from form factor standpoint, but also just from a wiring location standpoint. So let's go ahead, get the box open and see what we're working with. Here we have the PMU16 exactly as it was from the supplier. I bought this specifically from ECU Master USA directly. And as this isn't any sort of sponsorship or anything, this was a completely just full price purchase. I just am very confident this is going to work out very well for my car because I was willing to risk almost $1,600 on it. Now, when I bought this unit, I actually bought the upgraded unit, which is why it was $1,500 and something dollars as opposed to like about $1,300. And that's because it's actually a PMU16 DL. The box doesn't actually say that anywhere, so I'm assuming they all just ship in the same packaging, but the DL unit includes data logging and has accelerometer access and stuff so that you can write specialized rules around it. That will be particularly handy while I'm testing and logging how much demand my fuel pumps have, how much demand my giant electric fan has, and when I want to write specialty rules to keep myself from bursting into flames when I'm upside down. Now, I also bought it on a special sale that included a USB to CAN adapter for the same price. So it's just a free add-on. We'll talk about this after we break into the main entree here. Now, inside the box, we have a simple warranty card in a language that I definitely cannot understand. Well, I can read like every fifth word. It kind of looks like it's Polish or something. Then we have the PMU unit itself. This is the main purchase here. Everything else is just the pinouts, the connectors, and the instructions from the look of it. The unit is actually a pretty small form factor. This actually looks about the same size as the fuse blocks that's currently in the 240Z. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple, basic layout. You have a center stud here, which is power from the battery. You have an LED array down here, which seems to indicate each individual circuit and probably gives you status outputs. This is the primary plug that handles both inputs and outputs of power. So if you have a switch providing an input, it'll come in on one of these pins. And if you're sending power out to a device, it'll go out on one of these pins. It also comes with the connector to build your harness. And underneath the clear packaging material, we have all of the pins required, as well as the colorized instructions, which is a nice touch for laying out your pins. 
Now, because this unit requires programming, you must connect to it for said programming via CAN bus. In this case, I bought this during a sale that included a free USB to CAN adapter. Now, just glancing at this real quick, it appears basically you have a USB on one side to adapt to a serial port format on the other with a connection that allows you to pin it however you need to. Now, CAN doesn't have very many pins compared to serial, so I'm guessing there's probably only like four wires you actually have to set up in here, but we'll pull it apart, take a look at it, because we'll have to do that before we can program it. Now keep in mind, this signal has to go through the same giant plug output here. So you'll want to figure out which one of these are the CAN connections, and in your wiring diagrams and your design for your harnesses, carry those to somewhere you can connect to it, otherwise you won't be able to program the unit easily or make changes after it's under the dash of your car. So let's go ahead, get it out of here, and see how it fits with the other components in my 240Z already. Here we are inside the car, and right now I've got all the wiring temporarily hooked up. I still have to come back and rewrap all these harnesses, but I've been deleting all the extra wires and adding in the new ones for the gauges and getting everything running. This fuse block is what runs all of the old harnesses. Now, this is a aftermarket unit. Normally it would be glass bus fuses, but in this case we're using newer blade connected fuses, which is a lot nicer for finding at auto parts stores, but I still want them out of the car. As you can see, basically there's two main harnesses that connect into this fuse block and it mounts directly to a piece of body that basically elevates it so that you have access to it through the center console when you remove an access port. I want to see if I can fit the new PMU-16 in the same place. And it is a pretty darn good fit. Now I think I might need to design my plate to be pretty tightly fit in here, but that actually is not bad at all. This might be the project that requires me to teach myself CAD design to make a nice little CNC backplate for this thing. If this could be mounted right here, because obviously the mounting hardware for the PMU are on the outsides, whereas the other one had the bolts through the center, this could be a nice permanent fixture point that's accessible through even the factory center console. I'm not entirely sure I'm using the factory center console on this project, but that's a nice feature. And if I do go through the hassle of learning how to do CAD design and making the thing, I might as well put it up for everyone else to get to. So let's go ahead and take a look at maybe making something and making sure this is where I actually want to put this unit. I installed Fusion 360 as that seemed like a good starting point to playing with CAD. Now this version is free for personal use and gave me a good way to try out more advanced features without having to dive into a paid copy. I knew the basic design I was trying to achieve was basically a plate with a recessed section where the riser from the body would fit into and then I would turn around and add mounting holes to this both to mount it to the body of the car and then to mount the PMU to it. Once I started playing with this basic design and looking at how the PMU worked, I started thinking that this would be a good candidate to be made out of aluminum as that would also help function as a heat dissipator. I lucked into the fact that I found the ECU Master website having a model of the unit I'm using, which gives me a reference to make sure that my mounting points and everything are accurate and to get an idea of what it would actually look like in practice. Now that I had a model to work with, I was able to go ahead and line it all up with mine, verify all my measurements, use it to mark out the holes for the mounting points to the plate, and then start to play with some advanced features. One thing I started playing with was drawing out and replicating patterns to create heat fins, creating surface area that would help dissipate heat from the power unit. I also played with several different types of holes, threading, and playing with creating recesses to make things easier to access. For example, I added a small recess just below where the power plug would connect to allow easier access for adding and, or inserting and removing the plug, as well as just giving me an idea of how 
beveling and other recesses work. It took me a few tries to figure out the exact depths of everything that I was going to be working with, trying to imagine what it would look like in aluminum, trying to determine whether or not my venting would cut through and pop into my other recess below the power plug. Basic things that you're not familiar with in CAD can cause a lot of weirdness. Once I had it pretty well mocked up, it was a very simple design, but ultimately something I was pretty comfortable with trying to actually take to production. Now, in order to actually produce it, I'll have to have somebody else do that because obviously I don't have a 3D printer, and I'm not even entirely sure that I could 3D print this for testing, but if I can, that would save me a lot of money before I turn to some CNC shop to make me it out of aluminum. Ultimately, having this 3D model of the PMU also allowed me to understand how it was assembled and to get an idea of how this would work with my system. Now that I've learned a little bit of CAD design and come up with a bracket that I like, I'm sold on the idea of putting the PMU where the fuse block used to be. Now that the fuse block is going away, I no longer need it and these pigtails that are already on the unit would be excellent for an intermediary harness to the PMU. To do that, I'll have to destroy the fuse block, but that's no big loss. This seems kind of cheapy anyway. Now, bearing in mind that I'm making an intermediary harness, I won't be able to actually mount this thing in place to get perfect measurements because even though the CAD design is done, I will now have to send this out to a rapid prototype company to make me a one-off plate and send it back. And that's gonna take at least a week or two. And I'd rather not waste the time doing it in aluminum on the first go if I could maybe get it done in a 3D printed form and test fit it first. To that end, I've reached out to Chris from Bias for Build because he has a lot more CAD experience than I do. And he's gonna review it and make sure it makes sense and see if it could be 3D printed first or if it needs to go straight to CNC. Ultimately, the final version of the plate in the bracket needs to be in aluminum because it will also double duty as a heat sink for the PMU. Now that I have a plan, I can at least get the wiring harness done so that I can get this in the car to start configuring it and figuring out how the software works. So the first step in this is to destroy this fuse block. Now that I have the PMU wired into the car, I can begin the configuration process. Now the PMU should turn on as soon as I supply the ignition 12 volt to the unit. I've wired it to the battery, I've given it all the grounds, and I have my connection for my CAN bus to USB to the laptop set up. Now what you need to do is install the software package available on ECU Master's website for the configuration software and grab the preliminary manual for the configuration. It's just a PDF that walks you through everything. I scanned through it real quickly and it has a ton of information. So once you have that, you can launch the software package. And in this case, I have launched the software once already. And because I launched it, it asked me to name my PMU, which I did. This time it just launches me straight in here and just says that my PMU's name is 240Z PMU. And in the bottom left, you can see the green indicator saying connected. That lets you know you are connected to a device. And in the lower right, I can see numbers counting up, which I assume are something to do with the logging. So now that I'm sitting here, I need to figure out how to define my circuits. To start with, 
I'm going to reference my little note cheat sheet that I have here and start trying to get my ECU to get power. That would be the first thing that would let me know it's working because I'll hear the fuel pumps prime. So let me go review the manual and find out what I actually need to do to make this thing work. Add a power output. I shall name this ECU. The pin will be a single. The pin's number is one, which is actually 011. I'm just going to set everything here to default. I'm going to try to, if it ever does pop, I don't want it to keep retrying instantly, so I'm going to put 10 seconds between each retry. And I am going to say, okay. At another power output. Now this is going to be to my wipers. Now that I have the wipers gaining power from this unit, but I actually have the old wiper system in the car doing all the work of the actual modulation of the wipers. So all I actually need to do here is provide a 12 volt out and let the switch do the rest of the work. The wiper pin is 05. I'm going to go ahead and let it have 20 amps of capacity because that's what the fuse was. I highly doubt wipers will need that much of a draw unless they're going against a dry window. I seem to have wipers. Why didn't my ECU circuit come on? That is weird. So I actually have a mistake on my notes. On my notes, I had the ECU output pin as 11. 11 is actually being used for my horn I actually am supposed to be putting this out to 13. So let's put this out to 13. Well, there went the fuel pumps and everything's primed. So that part's working. So now I just need to continue down my list and create all of the rest of my pinouts so that I can save this configuration. So I will speed this along so that you don't have to wait for me to try to do all this. Game begin.
The unit is in the car and working. Now, it's not finally installed. I need to build that bracket that I modeled up before I can actually permanently install it. But the rest of the dash and the wiring harness still has to come back out anyway because I need to rewrap it now that I'm sort of finalizing what wires are there and which is going into what route. Ultimately, this thing works way better than I was expecting. The software seemed kind of daunting when I looked at pictures of it, but it's actually really easy to use. You just go in there, say whether something's an input, an output, and start playing with it. As soon as you apply it, it starts to work immediately. In the case of figuring out how to match an input to an output, like in the case of my headlights, I was thinking about it and making it way more complicated than it really was. When you define an input and give it a name, for instance, headlight switch, it actually shows up in the channels list. So you have all sorts of CAN bus communications, but you also have any defined input you've given it. So you just search down to headlight, pick your switch, say when it's true, and you're off and running. It is a really nice little system. Now I will say that I had way more of a difficulty crimping all the connectors for the big header, and that's just because I didn't have crimpers that fit. So I had to trial and error for quite a while before I found the right combination of crimpers, and it was actually a set of my spark plug crimpers that actually fit best. But once I had that done, it was no big deal to put it in here. Now, I did get it a little backwards, I used up all my 15 amp faster than I did my 25 amp, and you actually have more 25 amp to work with. So I probably should have started out by filling out my 25 amps first, but it's not that big of a deal. Nothing in my circuit is even coming close to using the maximum of what it's pinned to. That's one of the best things about this system is I can see the actual load. And when you set up something, for instance, a 15 amp circuit, it's 15 amps continuous. That's the maximum usage continuously. You can set the inrush to over 100 amps when it first comes on. So when your windshield wiper first comes on or the electric fan first comes on, that surge doesn't count toward the total maximum for that circuit. And so as soon as the inrush is over, it just then starts sampling to make sure it's within the continuous running guidelines. And almost everything on my car required way less than I actually thought based on what fuses were assigned to it. Now, if I were going to go about this again, I would definitely buy the version that has the auto sport connectors. I prefer Deutsch connectors immensely over this thing that came with this particular unit, but it's gonna work just fine for this car and I was able to get past it. Now, when I pull all this harness out and the dash out, I'll go ahead and wrap this all up. But as you saw in the video, I labeled every single wire in my little breakout harness between the PMU and my other harnesses. So this is going to be a breeze in the future to maintain. I'll just go ahead and wrap and cover those in some braided coverings to give them some protection. If you have any questions about this particular setup or anything I was doing in the video, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.